Hey everybody, it's V. How you doing? Hope that your holidays are going well. I thought we would just do a little bit of a salvage gameplay. So really without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, and do that. So uh, this Welcome is just going to be kind of a, you know how I like to do these kind of a dirt under your fingernails. Uh, you know, just a pretty straightforward look at a salvage run. Now, a couple of caveats to that. I'm not expecting 890 jumps <laughs> to be just hanging out at Art Corp left and right. Um, and, and that's kind of how they have the PTU set up. And I understand why they're just kind of um, double checking whether or not, um, you know, th you know how fast things can go and, and just trying to get a sense of, of how fast people can can do this type of work and and uh, and, and they probably didn't want to have a ton of time spent looking for actual derelict costs so in we go we're gonna go ahead and head on up to the vulture and we're gonna head over to arc l1 and we are just going to just do some some hull stripping and so there's the vulture and in we go uh and um you know the TLDR is I do, you know, pretty well in an hour. I actually fill uh, the entire vulture, including the, you know, the the space that uh, that's not part of the cargo grid, um, which ultimately gets me in a little bit of trouble. But um, you know, no no big deal there. We'll just kind of take it take it one piece at a time here. So we're just gonna go ahead and launch the vulture and get out of here and and climb up out of here and, and call it good, so. You are clear to launch. And firing up the engines, topping off the gas tank. You know, the last time I landed, it didn't allow me to repair or fuel or, uh, you know, restock, that type of thing, so we're doing that as we just kind of call open the, the pad and we get heading. Quantum fuel is at 100%. So I have been, uh, incredibly excited about salvage gameplay. I know that uh, hull stripping is just kind of the beginning of it. Um, and really, that's what I wanted to do today, was kind of just see in an hour's time how much product could you actually, you know, if you had an hour run to do. Um, and so that is one of the things I will say, um, you know, where a lot of people would have kind of you know, and, and rightfully so, would do a lot of editing and that type of thing. I'm just going to kind of give you the the whole enchilada here. So Thank we're you. just kind of, uh, we need to get ourselves out of um, Atmo. And so we want to kind of boost our way out of here if we can. Um, and uh, just kind of climb up out of here and and uh, and get ourselves, um, you know, moving over towards our call one. Now, you do need to be at, uh, at 7 point three um you know kilometers uh, altitude before you can actually spool your drive and so i thought we'd just take a look at one of my favorite things to do and star citizen is such incredible eye candy uh to take a look at uh at what's happening here so as we depart and so that's us uh doing our thing for sure getting ready to spool up out of here and uh take a sip of coffee here so as you can see the vulture is not incredibly um, you know super agile getting out of atmosphere at all it's she definitely is a bit of a boat um, and that's okay I think that that's I don't think there's anything wrong with that you can see we're just starting to climb now out into the five, so uh, I decided to go ahead and, and boost a little bit and see if we can't get a little bit more um, altitude underneath us, so we can get out of here and actually go do some some uh, some of the fun stuff. So as we're approaching five minutes, you know, this has been us kind of, uh, you know, basically from the terminal out. You know, uh, we just basically climbed aboard the Vulture and and. Um, you know, spooled up the quantum drive and off we go to Arc L1. And so it won't take long. I I can't remember what uh, the 
the base drive is on the Vulture, but it doesn't take a, a long time. And uh, the good news is, is like I said, and I, I know it's not necessarily going to be how it is long term, but for now in the PTU, Arc L1 is kind of surrounded by 890 jump derelicts, which, uh, you know, offer a, a fairly considerable amount of RMC, which is, and that's the stuff that you collect when you hull strip. So, um, yeah, fairly straightforward here as we, as we just kind of head towards Arc L1. So I have done some hull stripping as well in the Reclaimer, and that was a lot of fun. I really think if you had a pilot, you really could do, a, a th it could really be a three-man operation. You could have a pilot that could flex back to the second laser, um, someone who's constantly on the laser and one person to manage cargo. And I think that you'd be in really good shape. I think... Uh, you know, a, a form, it would be kind of um, interesting. I think a three-man operation would be more profitable. Um, I think a four-man operation would be a little more efficient so that, you know, the pilot can kind of stay piloting. Um, I do think one person is perfectly capable of handling the, uh, the cargo area. Um, it's not a difficult job. Um, and so, yeah, I think three or four people could easily, uh, you know, do the reclaimer, um, and, uh, and probably do okay with it, considering how quickly you can get, uh, um, you know, some RMC on board with that thing, uh, especially with the, with the bigger choices of the, uh, of the lasers. Now, uh, the lasers on the Vulture, you know, there's a couple of, I don't know if they're lasers or cutting beams or whatever, but they um, are, you know, you have a couple. You have one that, that takes, it's kind of a little more surgical and one that just kind of hits hard. Uh, it takes like big chunks or whatever. Uh, and so um, it's interesting. The Reclaimer has the first one that it has is the one that takes chunks on the Vulture. So, and then it has even a bigger one. So um, yeah, it, you know, there is some scale there. There is some um, some progression between the, the different uh, capabilities of the systems for sure. So this is me. You know, came to Arc L1, as you can see, there's kind of, I think people have been affectionately referring to these as kind of paw print looking icons. You can see there's several of them out here, and all those are actually 890s in the PTU. So, you know, it's almost like a, you know, there was like a, a luxury um, campsite or something that was hit by a tornado, <laughs> you know, here in uh, Arc L1, and there's lots and lots and lots of 890s to, to go after. And that's what we're going to do. You know, we're just going to kind of prioritize one or two of them. Now, there were people on some of these, and so you do have to look around and be respectful. There's enough of these around that you don't have to pull up on somebody and start chewing up on the one that they're um, that they're currently salvaging. No reason to do that, quite honestly. And uh, you can see us. There, there was one right there that we just kind of passed, but we're approaching this one that's right out kind of on our 12 o'clock, right on our nose. We're going to position ourselves. Now, a couple of things. Um, you know, you will notice when I pull out the mining laser uh, that there's red and yellow areas. I think that the yellow areas really more or less mean that they're better, higher efficiency for hull scraping because you can certainly hull scrape on the red areas. Um, maybe, maybe the hull's a little thicker there, whatever the case may be, but you can see I'm just kind of rolling up on this derelict it's an 890 derelict and we're pulling out the mining laser and you can see there's a there's a, the there's the top choice in the upper left hand part of the ui you can see that um there's a there's a couple of different options there um and so i'll switch over to the uh to the to the bigger option here is as i kind of realize that i'm on the smaller one so i definitely begin kind of on the smaller one and it's okay uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It just is. It's a little more. Um, it, it won't. It won't collect the RMC as fast. There, you can see I just switched over uh, to the to the, you know, to the to the little bit larger laser. And then you just kind of go to work. I mean, this is kind of like, uh, you know, the I've heard some jokes where this is called kind of, um, you know, pressure, you know, pressure wash uh, simulator or some of those types of things. But 
Um, yeah, you just begin. You're just gonna begin hull stripping here, um, and then as what happens is, is a, a box of RMC gets created. Uh, and then a second one will get created, and, and it will block the machine. So you'll have to go down every so often and manage the cargo. So we're cruising along here, and you can see we've already got one. We've already, that's how quick we actually were able to make one box. So you can see that this is actually going to be fairly quick. Um, and, uh, and so I was actually really surprised by this. I knew that they had retuned this. A little bit um, from the first time that I had done some salvage and I thought wow they've really really increased the speed here significantly in a good way so um, as you can see here we're just gonna kind of continue uh, you know continue stripping the hull and you know uh, like I said the TLDR is I fill up within within 40 minutes I fill in I'll get all 12 of the SCU that go on the cargo grid and then I get another two, four, six, seven, eight, almost 20 uh, in total, I think. Um, you know, maybe 19 or 18, 19 or 20 in total of the RMC when I'm done here in less than an hour. Now, I understand, like I said, you're not going to find, um, a, you know, 890 jumps everywhere. But, you know, I just I just kind of was able to collect that many. Uh, I, think it, I think it was in the neighborhood of 18 boxes and maybe more. We'll count them. You can see now I've got to go back. It's it's blocked, and I have to go back and clear the, you know, clear the. Um, and I'm trying. At first here, I like they fixed this issue where uh, half the time when you exited your your seat, you would actually go out the side door. And I was trying to avoid that, looking for exactly where you know internally here is the uh, you know is the. Um, you know, to escape your uh, escape your seat without without going outside. You know, just but I eventually just kind of hit Y and just said, well, whatever, I'll just deal with it. But it never did. It never actually dumped me outside after that. So they must have fixed that. You can see I was looking for kind of the inner thought of you know, kind of turn around without going outside. I didn't want to open the door and. And EVA every single time, but eventually I just hit Y. It did pivot me around the full 180, and it never didn't do that. So that's something that they fixed as well, because half the time it would dump me into EVA if I used Y before. So that's a good thing as well. That's probably a quality of life little balance pass here. Now we're gonna come back out here. I'm just gonna pull out my um, uh, tractor beam, and we're just gonna move these guys onto the cargo. So that's kind of, that's the most important thing to do is just kind of snap them. Yep. And then you can see, just going to kind of manage that. Yep. And then snap them. And I love the snap too. I honestly did not expect them to have a snap two going already. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy that that, that that is a thing, you know, for sure. So, uh, yep. Yep. Got that to snap on the grid and off we go. So the fact that that came in with snap two, I was really kind of concerned that I wouldn't. Uh, that's a big shout out to Sig on that one. You guys, uh, you know, that that really does make the cargo refactor feel like a lot, you know, just a lot more polished. And you know, we've talked about how things don't always come into the game polished. And and so that, that was really nice. So you can see how fast we've already... We've already got two boxes together. I don't know, I may have already had one in there already. I don't recall, um, but I know you can get the three boxes. So uh, let's go, you know, before you have to eject. So let's go ahead and keep an eye on this. We're gonna go ahead and, and we're right back to using the bigger laser, which was, which was smart. And we're just going along here, hall stripping. And uh, yeah, that's just kind of where we're at. We're you know, part of my goal here was to see how fast could we get, um, you know, and really I was trying to make this video around an hour, so I know it's going to be long, but I also know that it's, you know, this is basically an entire walkthrough of, of, the, uh, of the loop. Now, um, you can see there we've already got another one filled, and we're just kind of continuing on, and and eventually, of course, you have to start moving around a little bit um, in order, you know, uh, as you can see, I am lined up and I've, I've chewed up a lot of the stuff that I can see. 
Um, but there's a lot <laughs> you really can can do quite well um, as far as how fast this goes. And, and like I said, the Reclaimer is even a little faster, although you would be splitting that with, uh, with, with people, so you have to be as efficient as possible. So, yeah, I'm just kind of cleaning up here as much. In, uh, and I'm working inside the yellow lines, as you can see. Eventually, I do, you know, work on the red, and I really didn't notice that much of a downtick um, in, uh, in how fast the collection rate was. But that, yeah, no big deal there. We're about 15 minutes in now, and you can see that we are, um, you know, we've got our uh, three. I've already got kind of three boxes down in the hopper. I think one of them was already there, so let's just call it two boxes down in the hopper. And we've already got one um, more created, uh, and we're about to create our second one. So we're going to have to go down and manage the, the inventory here in a, in a little bit as well. So, yeah, we're just chipping away here. We're almost there. Now, one thing I will say... Um, when you get to one full unit, there seems to be kind of like this delay time that happens. I, I would recommend turning off your laser. It doesn't seem like it, like if you, the point being is it, it looks like it finishes a box. Um, and then you can keep, you're still hull stripping and you can actually hull strip for like about a good 10 seconds or so before um before it will stop and it doesn't actually seem to give you that that product so whenever you get to 1.0 or whatever you know make sure that you do um stop you know um you'll find that i think it, it will be better you can see here i was just working the cargo grid um and so eventually like i said i stuffed you know i had time so i stuffed it all in there uh and i came to regret that as, uh, as we'll talk about towards the end um, I ended up having to kind of figure out a way to get rid of a bunch of the extra cargo that I had. All the, like I built anything, the, any RMC that was not on the cargo grid, uh, it, it would not register the cargo grid until I took those boxes off. So, but that's okay. Um, you know, just kind of lesson learned and learn it, learn it from me. Don't don't learn it yourself. I mean, uh, but we'll talk about that more as we kind of. I'll get going here. So you can see I'm, I'm starting to kind of, um, you know, kind, kind of wrap around the, the 890 a little more, looking for a little more surface area here in order to, um, you know, in order to do some salvage. And, and, uh, and the lasers will kind of guide you, you know, they'll, they'll turn from red beams to kind of the, the particle beams. And, you know, when they're in particles, you're getting stuff. And when they're in red, that it's just it's they're not it's not actually pulling any material in so um you know it's never a bad idea to kind of to relocate a little bit and you know much like you're painting the wall or pressure washer in the house or or something you know you obviously you want to kind of um or mowing a lawn even you want to kind of create lines and keep an eye on where those are at and and, uh, and really kind of take as much of the material as you can in the areas as you pass it so uh you know you're not leaving a whole bunch of rmc behind so we are now approaching kind of the 19 minute mark believe it or not um and we've got uh you know a number of boxes on board those are all worth about seven seven thousand six hundred each those boxes um and, and depending i mean they can be worth i've seen them up as much as like seven eight or seven nine i think but, you know, where I ended up taking them, I think I was seeing them as getting down as low as 7.5 as well. So um, some some of the market conditions are definitely impacting, you know, impacting those. And and um, I think I'll probably just call it an average price of 7,500. So every two boxes is, is worth 15,000. So you can see we've, uh, you know, we've got another box on board and we're just going to keep, keep on continuing here. Um, and so if we think about it, we've got, uh, I think there's three, four, five, almost six boxes already collected. Um, and, we're, and we're just 20 minutes in. So, uh, you know, not, not, the, not the greatest money in the world, but, you know, still 40,000 in you know, 20 minutes is not terrible, you know. Um, and especially when you're first starting out, it's not terrible. So you can hear I, I switched over to a red area, and you can see. I mean, it's working fine. I you know like um, 
I, I, I'm not exactly sure what those differences are between red and yellow. I just assume that maybe one of them means yellow means more efficient. You know, or you're, or there's more material overall to be had there. But you can see that we're very, you know, very much able to work the red area without any problem. And um, and we're, you know, we're doing we're doing a, a good fair bit of collecting here as well. So, um, just one of those things where you know, uh, it is good to note. I, I wouldn't avoid the red, but make sure you know you've got good surface area and. And really keep an eye on the, like I said, the mining laser itself will tell you if you're on stuff. Um, it will, it, it'll either be these particles, like you see now, and you can see once again, we've got to, we're, we're, we're blocked up again. That's how fast it can happen. So uh, it'll be either red beams, and that means it's not doing anything, or it turns to particles. Uh, and when it turns to particles, it's definitely um, uh, doing, uh, doing that, doing this thing. So here's two more boxes for the, you know, uh, we're going to go ahead and just move those around. Yep. Snap them too. All right. And eject this guy here. And this doesn't bother me at all. You know, there's six boxes. Here's the seventh box now. Um, and uh, and in we go. Yep. And up we go uh, to get some more. So um, we're just going to kind of keep on doing this here. Now, the one mistake that I guess I will say that I made is I think... At least the way that it behaved for me, and I don't know if any of you have had any other, um, have had any other, um, experience with it, but my experience with it, uh, is, um, that if you have anything more than what's on the cargo grid, it's not going to register the cargo grid when you go to sell it to TDD. That's my experience. I had, I ended up actually having, and I'll show you at the end of this video, like pushing a bunch of cargo RMC off of this thing so I could get it to, to so I could get it to sell. And I actually even ended up having to fly up out of Armistice and, and like eject the last couple and, and just kind of drop them <laughs> on Area 18. In, in order to just get back down to the last 12, you know, in the cargo grid in order to sell. So that part of it was a was a little disappointing. And like I said, we'll talk about that more at the end. But um, I was eventually able to sell the 12 um, that were on the cargo grid, or at least 11 of them the last one didn't sell, uh, you know, after I did that. But, it, you know, it took a long time for me to deal with that issue. So here we are. We're still kind of doing what we're doing here, though, right? We're kind of collecting there, there goes another box full, and you can see where, you know, when you, when you're when you're zooming along here, um, you know, approaching now, you know, the the twenty third minute, you know, you really, you know, if you have a guy who's, you almost could post a guy down there, to take care of the, uh, um, to take care of it because you you, you know, uh, move, moving the moving the um, the SEU boxes around because it's, you know, it's, it's actually fairly quick. Um, now, you know, splitting it would be, you know, it's probably not worth you, you know, getting up and, you know, it's, it's easier just to get up and go down there and, and move, move a couple around or whatever. But you, like I said, it's not, it's not like you couldn't, you know, it's not like it would be so slow that it wouldn't be worth it. Because it'd only be every couple of minutes that somebody would have to have to move the boxes around and you know and you probably would end up going a little fat a little faster as the boxes ejected if somebody was grabbing them for sure so yeah you can see here nice juice lots of juicy haul and we're tearing through it 890 obviously has an enormous amount of surface area most in the game currently and uh and you know and we're just kind of chewing this up and having a good time and there we are again, blocked, so back and we go. So, uh, you know, kind of at the 25-minute mark, you can see that we are, uh, we've got a number of boxes for sure. Um, and uh, and so I honestly think it probably right around the 40-minute mark, you can get your, you know, you can get yourself completely full. So that is eight right there. Yeah, and here comes number nine.
Yep. And they snapped right in, and up we go again. So number nine is done there. And back up we go, and it's not, like I said, it's not that big of a deal to have to come down here every, it's only like a two, two minute or whatever process to come down here and do that. So, um, and really, like I said, I'm at eight or nine, then you got 10, 11, 12. I mean, at three more boxes is that's when I, you know, now that I realize that when you have extras in your ship, it's supposed to be okay, but it wasn't for me. Um, I think I'm, I'll always just load the cargo grid itself and head in. And so we'll talk about that time. So here we are again, just, you know, continuing on the hull stripping here. We've already got nine boxes on board. Uh, and nine boxes, of course, uh, is around 60,000. So, um, you know, a, a little a little better than that, probably closer to 70,000 uh, when, you, when you do the change. So not bad so far, right? Um, and as you can see here, we're, we're zooming along here and... And, um, and we'll uh, we'll have another another box made before too long. So really enjoy, you know. I will say quite honestly, I really did enjoy this gameplay for sure. I think, uh, you know, I can certainly understand that it um, that that it would get tedious. But the thing is, is now that they've got kind of the crafting kind of associated with it a little bit as well, being able to make some things um, that that's pretty amazing. So yeah, it definitely definitely has my attention. You know, now that you know you can make certain things and I realized I think I was on the smaller laser and it was like, "Oh, well that's that's why this box was taking a little while." And it, there's a big difference between the smaller laser and the bigger laser when you're going up and in, into these uh you know, the bigger you know, the, the bigger one will chew through the stuff a lot faster and make your box a lot faster. So you really do want to be careful that you're on that a bait or a, a body or whatever the name of that is. That 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 makes it go a lot faster when you're doing your collection. Um, you know, and if you have to use the smaller one because you've got more, like, finer details, that that's fine. No question about it. But, you know, um, nothing wrong with... Uh, Nothing wrong with using the big laser, but like I said, it's it just seems to to really zoom and go nice and fast. So as you can see here, we're just cruising along. We're about to get uh, we're almost halfway to getting our second box full here on this particular run, and we are definitely starting to get to a place where you know after we get a couple more done, we could call it, and and I would recommend calling it then. I don't call it then this time, like I said, I. While I was out here, I thought, you know, I was going to try and do as many boxes as I could in an hour. And I was able to fill the thing almost completely, you know. So, um, here we are again in the red area, just kind of enjoying, uh, you know, kind of enjoying, kind of pulling in some more <laughs> RMC. And we're almost, you can see how I've hit the... You know, once you hit that one minute or that one SCU, I should have stopped a while ago. Like, it takes a little while to process it, and it's, you know, and I think we're actually kind of giving it, you know, it should, um, you know, yeah. I mean, you actually need, if it's better to stop right at one than it is to, to continue because I don't think it gives you credit for, you know, another, it could be up to 10, 15 seconds of, you know, of, of us, of hull stripping. So up we go here. That's going to snap too. All right. And we're going to eject this guy. Awesome. And he's going to snap right on there. And you can see right now we're at 11, you know, um, almost 12. Uh, and I wish I would have, like I said, I do wish I would have stopped here. I think, uh, I would have headed in, I would have sold, and all would have been well. But, uh, you know, I decided to push on, and this is right at the 30-minute mark. So you can see right at the 30-minute mark, uh, I mean, we're just a couple boxes shy of, uh, you know, of a full run. So um, that's actually not bad. I think of being able to pull off a full run in, in, in around a half hour is actually pretty darn good, if we're just being honest with ourselves. Um 
you know, and, and of course, 12 times 7, you know, is, isn't a bad amount of, um, isn't a bad amount of, uh, uh, of money either. I mean, you know, you're looking at, you know, 84,000 or so, which is, you know, not too shabby. Um, and here's one of the thing I will, you know, just kind of mention this to you guys if you happen to be watching up to this point. Notice how my lasers have gotten kind of spread out from each other. I, I, I managed to do that a couple times, but I have no idea what button I hit. You can see where they're, normally the lasers are kind of focused in one spot, but you can see here like how they're kind of off doing their own things in their own, in their own areas. I don't know how I managed to do that. Um, I do want to, you know, so I will kind of, if anybody's watching up to this point and you know like what button I might have clicked to, to spread the lasers out like that, I definitely would like to know, uh, and, I, and I'll have to look around for that. But yeah, here we are. We're continuing on. We've almost got another box made, and that's, you know, wonderful. Zooming along here. Yep, there's another box made, and, and, uh, and you know, obviously you got to keep on truck in here into the red here and you can see here we got plenty of haul the scrape <laughs> because of the 890 is just got it's just loaded so zipping along here enjoying it And um, pretty good, uh, pretty good haul, you know, to scrape around, like uh, around the, um, you know, around the uh, um, docking bay there for sure. And as long as your, you know, as long as your beams are particles, you know that you're getting material for sure. We're almost done now with this uh, second box here. In this particular go around, you can see I'm starting to reposition to kind of get underneath the ship. And it's like when I first got underneath here, I was like, "Oh wow, look at all the, look at all the good stuff." So, turning off the lasers there, you can see I was just like, "Oh, there is lots and lots to scrape underneath here." Holy mackerel! And we're about the 33 minute mark or so, and this is this is about the spot where I feel like I. You know, like I said, lessons learned. I should have just did the just the just the grid here itself, and I should have called it at that point. This is when, it, like, right when you get to this spot, this is when I recommend you call it. And if you have an extra one, I mean, you can try it. But I ended up having anything beyond the, what was in that that I ended up having to to kind of fly above the station. And, um, and get rid of the last two even. I had to push a bunch of them out in the hangar, which I'll show you um, towards the end. It, it was, you know, you can see, like, it's funny. Like, um, it, it was really kind of easy up to this point, but it become, you know, trying to kind of just fit these in and, and monkey around with them kind of becomes, eh, it's, it's, not, it's not as easy. Um, and you can see here, like, with it, the way that it's acting or whatever, I was like, yeah, I don't know. Here. I'll let it uh, fall down there, and then I will go um, and, uh, and and mine some more. And this is like I said, I really kind of debated with myself here: do I want to call it or not? And I, like I said, I kind of wish I did call it um, because I don't. I fill up the rest of the the um, the vulture here with another six or seven boxes. And all of those boxes I ended up having to offload just here I shot the thing by accident. Back to mining mode and we go. And you can see the lasers are together again. You see how the you know, like I said, they were kind of spread out, now they're together again. I don't know what I did or what button I pushed to make them kind of spread out from each other, but um, anyways, yep, that kind of healed itself, thank goodness, and 
and off we go. And so, I guess, uh, you know, for posterity's sake here, what I will do is I will kind of cut, now that, you know, th this video is already pretty long, you know, and you guys have seen kind of, I I'll stop it here and I will kind of cut to the last box there. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see here I have, I've stacked up a bunch of them. And I, uh, you know, that one fell on me, almost got me. Yeah, you know, you can see I'm just kind of playing with fire here a little bit, right? I, you know, I have I have them all, all the snap twos are in there. But I do, I put in uh, two, four, six, so there's seven more boxes um, right there. So that's a total of 19 boxes that I have in here. Um, and so I actually think that I go back up here and just do the last two as well. So, you know, I had a lot of boxes on here. I can't remember. I think uh, I think I do scrape a little bit more and just decide to... I think I do. I, let's see. Yep, I do. So you can see how many boxes I had down there. I think I just let it fill up one or two more times. And... Um, and then I call it good, and I had uh, and I had back. So, um, yeah, I, my lesson to you would be just fill up the cargo grid and fly in. Um, I, and certainly, you may have had you know the obviously the other option is to bring in a different cargo ship and just kind of make a transfer. Um, you know, and I have heard like something like a Hall A actually works pretty good for that kind of thing. Um, you know, I you, you certainly understand the risks involved with hauling. Uh, cargo at that point, but as you can see here, uh, I'm going to take kind of full advantage of the of the of the of the big laser and just kind of this. There's quite a bit of um, quite a bit of uh, hull to scrape here, and this is going to you know I'll make fairly short work of this. Um, you kind of just just hammering. This is not really being that clean even because I know I'm down to the last couple. There's uh, there's the first box, and then, yep, and then just go ahead and melt down the second box, and then we'll get out of here. So that was definitely, you know, once again, you know, in less than an hour, I was able to, and really it was right around the 32-minute mark that I had the 12 SCU boxes that I could have, you know, made this a 40-minute or so, you know, process. But I was just, while I was out, the whole concept of this video was how much, how many boxes could you get on board in an hour? And so the answer in my particular case is 21. You know, there was 12, um, you know, uh, down, you know, on, on the actual um, pad and then another uh, two, four, six, seven, and then eight, nine. So, yeah, I mean, that's how many I was able to get in less than an hour. Um Although, like I said, it didn't work out because it didn't recognize the Lucy's, on, you know, that were off the cargo grid. And what, for whatever reason, it was affecting it seeing the cargo grid as well. So I ended up having to do like quite a bit of work. And I'll show you that here towards the end of the video. So off we go. We know we're in good shape. And uh, we're going to head back towards Art Corp. And, uh, and, and and punch on out of here. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead as we're getting towards the 40 minute mark of the video here. I'll just go ahead and speed us speed us along. All right, here we're coming in for landing. Nothing special here. Just going to kind of to bring her on in. Um, Calling for a landing and then getting ourselves a landing pad. Kind of turning her around and in we go. So, pretty happy with, the, you know, with at this point, it was, you know, it was slightly less than an hour. I was pretty happy with the fact that I had 21 units on board, uh, you know, and really that's over 100,000. So, you know, over a hundred thousand in an hour is not, you know, it's not the greatest amount in the world, but it's not terrible. Um, you know, certainly I think you can make a lot more money doing stuff like, 
uh, mining, even probably even, I bet you had night, uh, rock mining, or certainly quantanium mining is certainly going to be, you know, unless something's changed significantly in 318, is going to be faster than hull stripping for sure. Of course, this is just the first bit of, you know, and, and depending on what's going on, I mean, you know, now that you can craft things, I mean, maybe you can sell things, you know, craft and sell things or whatever. Uh, there are, you know, potentially some other units, but you can see here, you know, I've got uh, uh, two, four, six, um, uh, twelve, and then, you know, t t uh, three more twos, so that's eighteen. There's nineteen, twenty, and one in the hopper is twenty-one. So that's that's where we ended up here for sure. So here, I'll, I'll just kind of cut to the end and show you what I was seeing. So this was the problem here. You can see that as I look at the uh, uh, the vulture, it just would not show me the cargo grid at all. So as I look around for the vulture here, uh, I find it. You know, I'm just I'm doing anything I can. Uh, pressing. You can see it's just it's not drawing the cargo grid, and it wouldn't draw the cargo grid at all, no matter what I did. Um, and so yeah, this was kind of a bummer you know i i eventually am able to sell when i push every other single box out of the cargo hold um you know and uh and and then and then and then i actually i pushed a bunch of boxes out and then i had to fly out because i you know i couldn't move a couple because i couldn't get the tractor beam out inside the, the hangar so i had to actually fly up out of armistice and you know and try and try and try so here here's that so let me show you that here real quick. all right so this was me for like about an hour you know i actually grabbed a cart outside of you know in the hangar and kind of rammed it against one of the boxes and got it busted it loose uh, and then just kind of used the physics to just kind of keep pushing up against these boxes and shoving them out the door uh, and eventually I did get him out. I was, I was really surprised. Now I should, you know, I very easily could have flown up out of atmosphere, um, earlier and, you know, and, and dealt with that situation, but, eh, you know, I was just, you know, I just thought it would be fun to try it from here. Of course you can't use a tractor beam in the hangar. Um, it wouldn't let me because of the armistice zone. Um, and, and like I said, I eventually do have to, I do, there's that box sitting right there on the, like right in front of the, um, the RMC creator, um, you know, mechanism. And I eventually do have to fly up and pull out the, uh, you know, you know, pull out the, uh, tractor beam to push, to push those last two boxes out in order to kind of get everything to sell. But this was me, um, you know, just, just trying anything I could and eventually, you know, to be honest with you, these they do push out eventually. It's 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 it is a crazy thing, um, you know. And I do notice that uh, I do notice that actually running against the boxes actually, you know, does help some. You can see here, I felt. <laughs> you know, this is it, it. Definitely was kind of ugly. <laughs> and you can see how many of these boxes I pushed out here. You know, I've got one, two. I've got five of them out, and I've got, you know, six, seven right there. You know, and so, yeah, I I never collected on those boxes. There was no way for me to do it. So it was just kind of kind of one of those things. I mean, you know, first of all, this is just super fun. I mean, this is Star Citizen. I get it. You know, um, I, you know I'm not complaining about it, but I will say, you know, I spent, you know, an hour collecting all those boxes and probably three hours or at least two hours running back and forth trying different things to try and get it to, to recognize the the grid you know what i mean and um and so this part of it yeah this was you know i could understand where this would be a, a pretty big frustration for you know for some people you know i i was kind of enjoying this i thought it was funny you know, uh, I expected to die here, to be perfectly honest with you. And then eventually we do get, I do finally knock these last boxes out of here. Um, 
they're doing a bit of a kabuki dance here. And uh, you can see, it's, uh, you know, I just kind of hit them here to kind of separate them. But there is, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes out. And then there's the other two in there, which are the nine, which is, you know, uh, now I can't, you know, I can't get, I couldn't move that box. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get myself trapped or killed if I keep trying. So eventually I do fly up out of atmosphere. And, um, oh, at first I ran back again to see if, it, you know, we were good enough to sell, but we weren't. And so I eventually ended up having to fly up out of Armistice, pull out my tractor beam, throw that box out the back, and then eject and throw the other box out the back. And then I was able to finally get, um, you know, it to register uh, in order to do the selling. So that's that. It's it was definitely a bit of a crazy episode. All right. So after getting rid of every one of those extra boxes and even like I said flying up above out of armistice and and um, and in taking the last two boxes out of there as well you can see it does finally show that I have the 12 boxes in there uh, not the 21 that I actually had and you can see uh, I, I've been seeing this as well where if you try and sell them all at one time it won't let you um, and so one of the things that I noticed in order to fix that, is you can just sell like a few of them at a time like one or whatever uh, and you can see that did complete and then i think i sell like five of them or something um you know just trying to just just see like and uh, and sometimes these complete and sometimes they can't um the one thing i will say is at the end here i was definitely <laughs> I definitely was uh, stuck with one unit that I couldn't sell. I don't know why. Um, you know, little things that can be improved upon for sure. Just trying to kind of to sell these. So, all in all, I want to say, quite honestly, this was probably like a three and a half to four hour investment. By the time that I was able to kind of do all the mining, get rid of all that extra cargo, messing around with just trying to, you know, you know, I would have been better served to just get the 12 on deck and then be done with it and then fly back um, and then fly back out again and do 12 more. Um, and, it, you know, part of it was a, I was just trying to do some learning, which is an important thing. But, you know, overall, I would say the gameplay for Salvage is fun. This part of it was a little tedious, as you can, you can imagine, just trying to sell this one box over and over again. <laughs> and having it fail um, with really no reason why. Besides, I mean, maybe maybe it's full, you know, or whatever, but, um, and I know we used to go to sell Quantanium and we weren't able to sell it as well, so. Uh, I do like the new commodities window, I will say, and uh, I have um, been enjoying doing a little bit of the salvage stuff. I will be kind of getting back into the, to the mining stuff for 318 as well, so. Hey, anyways, I know that this is a long one and I wouldn't have expected anybody to hang out that long with me on it. Uh, but I did want to give you kind of a, a regular day in the life of a hull scraper type um, video and, uh, and you know, just kind of give you the entire game loop, um, you know, just with, uh, you know, warts and all. So uh, anyways, thank you all so much for your time. Uh, please take care of yourself. And I will see you all around the first.